You already know that you use your hands for a lot of different activities, like writing, cooking, and of course, dissecting. Hopefully, you won't be using your hands for the last two at the same time. That would just be weird. Don't do it. If you've been using our website, you may even be familiar with the muscles, nerves and arteries that are involved in helping you perform each of these actions. But for this tutorial, we're going to be diving a little deeper. As deep as you can go, in fact. Join me as we venture past all the muscles and neurovasculature as we explore the bones of the wrist and hand. Our first stop in our journey through the 27 bones of the hand will be this proximal cluster of eight small bones, called the carpal bones, also sometimes referred to as the wrist bones. Next, we'll move a little more distally and explore the five metacarpal bones, which help form the bulk of the structure of the palm of your hand. This will then take us to our last stop, the 14 phalanges, which form the fingers. To make learning these bones a little easier, we'll divide them up into proximal, middle and distal groups. We'll then look between these various bones to name some important articulations that are found in the hand. At the end of the video, we'll use what we learned and apply it to a relevant clinical scenario that relates to the bones of the wrist and hand. We'll begin our journey with the bones of the wrist, called the carpal bones. To avoid any confusion, let's first get oriented. Here we have an anterior, or palmar view, of the wrist and hand. That means that this side, the pinky side, is medial, and the thumb side is lateral. You'll also see these respectively described as the ulna and radial aspects of the hand. Keep this in mind as we move forward. The last thing you want on this journey is to get disoriented. Now that we know what we're looking at, we can delve into the bones themselves. As we mentioned earlier, the carpals are a group of eight bones located at the proximal aspect of the hand. This cluster of small bones can be delineated into two rows, one proximal and the other distal. Grouping them off like this may make it easier to study them. Let's run through the carpal bones of the proximal row, moving from lateral to medial. The most lateral bone of the proximal row is the scaphoid bone. It is named after the Latin word for boat, which makes sense because if you squint your eyes and tilt your head, it sort of looks like a small boat. The scaphoid bone has just one prominent landmark, the tubercle of the scaphoid bone, which is found on the palmar side of the bone. This tubercle can be felt through palpation, so why don't you try it out for yourself? The scaphoid is the largest bone of the proximal row, and it lies beneath this region, which is known as the anatomical snuff box. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at KenHub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles, and atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy.